like I have a mountain in the background. <laughs> Hi guys, so today we're gonna do another little bit of a talk through video. But it's gonna be a different kind of video because I'm gonna be talking about brushes and my favorite kinds of brushes. So I'm gonna start from the whole face, you know, down to the little, tiny little nose highlight. <laughs> And so my eyes, the first thing I usually grab is my brow spool. I just want to mention before I continue on that Sigma has increased my discount from 10% to 15%. So you guys will get 15% off if you use code Gianna at checkout at sigmabeauty.com. So be sure to do that. Click the link in the description and then just type in Gianna and you guys will be good to go. So the one of my favorite brushes from Sigma for the brows and the lashes, mostly I use this for brows, the 80 brush. Brush right here that just has the spool at the end. It's probably one of my favorite brushes that Sigma has um, just because it's a nice, tough spool. Really, really easy to blend. Um, blends any brow product that I have on. The brow products that I use doesn't have a spoolie, so if it's a pencil or a pomade, it's just kind of easy that Sigma makes this brush and you could just kind of blend it out or brush your hairs. I actually use this when I cut my hairs too. My favorite brushes to fill in my brows with is the Anastasia, I think it's the 112 brush. It's or the 12 brush. It's like which what number it is, but I'll put it right here. And um, or here. It'll be on either side. It'll be on one of these sides. So that is probably one of my favorite brushes to do a pomade with um, or a brow powder. I also love the Tarte Bamboo Brush. You guys can see. I also love the Tarte Bamboo Brush as well. Probably one of my favorite brushes to fill in my brows with. I only fill in my brows with a brush if I am, like I said, using a pomade or a powder. That's the only time I really use this, obviously. That makes the most sense. But I just wanted to let you know, those are my two favorite brushes. I love how sturdy the angle on the angle on this brush is. I've been using these brushes, especially the Anastasia brush, for a really long time and it has not budged. Next, I would conceal my brows. And my favorite brow um, concealer brush that I would use lately is the Line Perfector by Sigma. It's the E68. It's this one right here. Like The tip is firm, but it's flexible enough to like really blend in the concealer underneath the brows. I really love it. The next brush that I use to put on primer, if I'm not using my finger, you guys know that I use Pearly, that's like my favorite primer to use. And if it's a little deep and I can't use my nails or my fingers or like, I can't like, you know what I mean? Like if you guys have nails, you know what this is, this little action here. So if I'm not using that, I'm using the MAC 286. It's a duo fiber brush. I thought I put it like right here. A duo fiber, it feels so soft. I actually just cleaned this one, so it's really nice and soft. But if it blends the primer so easily and it doesn't get caught up um, because it does have some synthetic hairs in it. So it is a natural and synthetic hair brush. That is what it's made for. You can use creams with it. So that is what I really like about this brush. It blends out my primer so flawlessly. So I love the 286 from MAC. Definitely a favorite. Now, to blend out my transition or crease color, my favorite brush to use is the E40 by Sigma. This guy right here, probably my favorite brush to use for blending out the crease. It's nice and fluffy, kind of reminds me of the MAC 224. <laughs> I used to work at MAC, so I used to know these brushes like the back of my hand, but I guess it's like slipping away a little bit. It reminds me of the 224, but fluffier and it does not scratch the lid when you have product on it. So if I use this brush for a couple of days with the same kind of bronzy color and I could still add color to it and it won't scratch the lid, what happens with the 224 from MAC, what I've noticed with the natural hair brushes, especially the 224s, which is weird, um, that the brush starts to scratch the eye, get, like gets scratchy and irritates the eye. With this, this stays so soft and I've cleaned these multiple, multiple times and really like the way they keep the eye nice and smooth and not scratched and good. This is a beautiful brush to blend your transition color in, to put transition powder on with, um, and it just gets right into that crease really, really well. So if I'm not using the E40, one of my favorite brushes to use, and I just used it today actually, so I want to just 
clean off just a little bit. One of my favorite brushes to use is by Samey. It's the Samey 2.2. So if I'm not using an E40, which I have so many of, I will use the Samey 2.2 if it is clean. So these brush hairs, you guys know that I'm a big fan of Samey. So these brush hairs are just absolutely amazing. I don't know what they make them with exactly. I could look it up and put it in the link below. Maybe it's the white hair on the brush that just keeps it so smooth or the way that they're cut or something, but I don't know, guys. The Sami 2.2 is probably one of my favorite brushes. It blends flawlessly. It's just a really great brush to have. I definitely recommend them. Sami as a brush company is amazing as well. So if I'm not using the E40, I would definitely grab this. It does the same kind of airbrush. Flawless blending. So one of the brushes that I forgot to mention when I'm doing a cut crease is the cut crease brush by Sigma. This is probably the only brush that I've ever seen called a cut crease brush. It helped me out so much when I was struggling with the cut crease. I still struggle with it sometimes, but this brush helped me so much to find my upper lid because I feel like I was doing cut creases before where my lid was just like super tiny and now I can see that I have a little bit higher of a lid where I could really, you know, get away with it and kind of make a bigger, more spread out cut crease. So this cut crease brush by Sigma is probably just like the, one of the most amazing brushes that I've ever used in my life just because it really, really helps me with something that I struggle with. You can see it is like a synthetic concealer brush. So it really, really carves out the area that you're trying to cut and it just really, really helps me in that area. And I feel like with anyone wanting to learn how to cut crease, I feel like this is probably one of the brushes that you really, really need most, just because it's just great and amazing. And it just really, really helps out in that area where I struggle with. I usually make my lid area look a lot smaller and with this, it makes my lid look a lot bigger and the shadow looks a lot bigger and shines more. It just really brings it out more thanks to this. I feel like I'm getting a lot better with cut pieces. I always like concealer brushes, not really concealer brushes, but uh, more synthetic brushes for putting on lid colors, especially when they are super shimmery and um, they have a lot of fallout. I like to use a brush that's really meant for a cream color or a cream or a concealer or anything like that, just because it really grabs onto the shadow and really puts it back where you want it to go. So you basically take the product and it just places the exact amount of product that you put on the brush. So that's what I really like. The brush that I really like that does that is the Sigma E58 brush. And is that one right there. I just want to make sure I can get it. And what I like too is that you can wet this brush and like sometimes the pigment won't come out of a shadow and I wet the brush with a setting spray and this just kind of really smooths out the shadow without caking it. I know that I realize that a lot of times when you are wetting the brush and putting on a shadow, it can cake up and look strange. Using this brush really, really smooths out the shadow on the lid, doesn't look cakey, it looks really, really nice and smooth, and I just love the E58, it's just one of my favorite things. And now for smudging, one of my favorite brushes is by Sigma again. Sigma is just like a breadwinner in my eyes. Um, it's the Sigma Short Shader, the E20. It is a super stubby little guy and I just love to use a short shader for putting shadows underneath the lash line, stuff like that. It really, really packs it underneath without so much fallout and that's why I like to use the short shader. Um, if I'm not using that, I use the pencil, the E30, which is that one right there. I use that one because it's meant to be put underneath the lower lash line or on top of the upper lash line. Those are my two favorite smudger brushes. Um, so the next thing that I put on is liner and I have two favorite liner brushes. One is from Tarte, it is their Bamboo Liner. Probably one of my favorite brushes to put liner on because it has an angle and it's just super easy to get that wing. And it just makes life like super easy with that. It's almost like the 210 from MAC. If you have that from MAC, it's almost like that. It's super, super fine and it's really, really made to make a nice thin line without getting too thick or anything like that. Another one that I like from Sigma is the Wing Liner Brush, the EO6. It is like an angled brush and a thin brush in one. You can see right here, it has the little angle there, but it also has that thinness that you'll get from a very pointed brush. It's super thin, but it's very, very flexible. It's not so stiff that you can't really move around the brush to make that wing. 
I really, really love this one and um, it's definitely a must have. For my inner corner highlight and my brow bone, I actually use a smudge brush from Sigma. It is literally the smudge brush, but I like it because it's super, super tiny and it will fit perfectly in the inner corner and you can just pat it on the brow bone. This is the E21. The bristles on the brush is so tight and it just keeps the pigment in, especially when I use like the Artist Couture Diamond Glow Powders. They're super shimmery and loose, but it keeps the pigment intact and uh, just kind of puts them in the exact place where you want them to go. So I really, really love the smudge brush for that. My favorite brush to apply foundation with. Can you guys guess? It's literally my favorite brush. Oh, it's so soft right now because it's so new. It is the Sigma 3D HD Kabuki brush because it has such amazing angles for every angle of your face. This brush is just so amazing. It's super soft and it makes the application so easy for applying foundation. It does not waste any products, I feel. I feel like it literally puts on every ounce of product that you put onto it. Um, but I absolutely love this brush. I have so many of them. I probably have like six or seven of them because I love them so much. This one is probably my favorite overall. 3D HD Kabuki brush is my number one, number one foundation brush to use. I absolutely love it. I'm dying over it right now because it's so soft and clean. It's just a very efficient brush to use because it does have those angles that fits by the nose and fits underneath, underneath the cheekbone, underneath the jawline on the sides of the face, it just really gets into this area too, which is very important because you kind of miss a lot of areas when you're using a round brush or a flat brush, anything like that. So that is why it is my favorite. For concealer, it is new. I wish this one was clean, but it's not because I just used it today. It is the 3D HD Blender from Sigma. This is one of my favorite blenders now, besides the Tarte Quickie Blending Sponge, you guys know this. But this is a in-between between the Beauty Blender and the Tarte Quickie Blending Sponge. And that is insane. I loved how soft the Beauty Blender was, but I felt like it absorbed a lot of products, which I did not like. I still use a Beauty Blender on the daily for my clients, but for myself, I like something that's a little bit more dense. The 3D HD Blender does just that. Like, it's in-between. I just love because I get the best of both worlds. I get the softness and then I get the density that the Tarte Quickie Blending Sponge has. So you can bake, you can blend. Again, the angles that Sigma does put on this. Again, the angles that Sigma has put on this sponge is just awesome. It fits in every single curve of your face and it just is amazing. I mostly use this side just because I'm used to it. But if I was using this for foundation, I'd probably use more sides, but this one is the most side that I use, but I like that it stops or has a line, that's where my nose will meet. So I, I always feel like I have a nice sharp contour when I'm doing my nose and it's just amazing. I absolutely love this sponge. Now you guys know what my second favorite is. Really was my first favorite, now might be my second. It is the Tarte Quickie Blending Sponge. Now this is the old Tarte Quickie Blending Sponge. I got a whole bunch before they went out of stock. Now they have the new Quickie Blending Sponge, which I'm not sure, I actually haven't tried it yet, but this one is just my favorite and I'm trying to keep as many as I can because I just love this one so much and I love how dense it is and the shape of it and I really feel like it didn't absorb too much product and that's why I really loved it. It kept a nice coverage underneath the eye. For baking it was amazing. You guys have seen him so many times in my videos you know that I love him very very much. Moving on from that, now I will start to bronze. So the bronzer brush that I use the most, you guys have seen me use like a million one times, is the F23 by Sigma. Oh my god this is like a Sigma party. So it's the soft angled contour brush. It's probably the most beautifully made brush for the angles of your face, especially the cheekbone area. You can use it this way or this way. I kind of use it more this way, but you can use it which, whatever way you want and you'll get a nice contour bronzed face. I'll show you up close. Because it's so softly cut, it really blends out your bronzer so nice that you don't have to set the entire face. This just blends out my bronzer beautifully without looking patchy or anything like that and I really, really love the way it blends it out. The F23 is the way to go for bronzer. I really, 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 really recommend you get this one. Now after that, I'll probably have done my eyes and what I like to do is wipe away my extra baking powder. And what I use to wipe away my extra baking powder, can you guys guess? A lot of YouTubers use it. 
made me get it. See if you guys can guess before I bring it up. If you guess right, it is the F25. This brush is just so smooth. If you have fallout, if you have too much baking powder, or if you're getting rid of any excess powder, this is an amazing brush to use. I absolutely love it. How it's tapered to fit in this area of the eye and below the cheekbone as well. I use it to blend sometimes, but I also have another brush that I like to use for blending. If you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you know that I've been using this brush for literally I would say seven years. This brush has been in my kit, in my little makeup bag. It's literally been with me forever. And it is the Too Faced Kabuki brush, the old Too Faced Kabuki brush. I've used this so many times. And they have it, it they have the same brush now, but it's completely redesigned. But oh my god, this is an amazing brush that I use to either put foundation powder on, to blend out the face, anything like that. I love this and I will never let it go. Now, for a blush, my brush for the year, I feel like, has been the F10 by Sigma. It is this guy right here. You guys know, Sigma is just like my number one company for brushes. I just literally have been obsessed with Sigma ever since I touched my first 3D HD Kabuki brush. <laughs> literally, the F10 is just perfect for the apples of the cheeks. I also grab it up, or I bring it up to the um, ear just a little bit, but it's just so smooth with application. When you set your under eye and you're baking your under eye, um, what I like to it is that this blush applies through the baking powder. I feel like a lot of times when I'm baking the blush it gets a little lost where I baked my eye but I feel like this powder blush brush really helps to get in there and does not get any blush loss. If you know what I mean, sometimes you'll feel like you're getting half of the blush on to the area that you want. The half of it goes missing where you're baking. I feel like that just happens to me all the time. I don't know if that happens to you guys, but it doesn't. I feel like the F10 really, really helps with that application. So you guys know my favorite brush to use for highlighting is, it is the Morphe M501. That's probably my top brush to use. I only have one, which is surprising. I need to get more, but this brush is just my favorite brush ever to use. For highlighting it just grabs onto the product the shimmer the highlight so well and just places the highlight so nicely onto the cheek and I just am have been obsessed with it for a couple years now and I just can't get rid of it I just love it so much so that is it you guys that is all of my favorite brushes so let me remind you before you guys go I do have an increased discount on sigmabeauty.com the link is below. You can click that, use code Gianna, you will get 15% off. And this code will be valid. The 15% off code will be valid from March 31st to April 14th. That's amazing. For, so for two weeks, you get 15% off on Sigma. That's amazing. You guys can get all the brushes that you want. If you like the ones that I mentioned in this video, if you don't, you can get whatever you want for 15% off and I love that. That concludes this brush favorites video. So I hope you guys have liked this video. I like that I'm talking to you guys a lot more, a lot more, a lot more. I feel like you guys can get to know me a little bit better now that I speak a little bit more. Um, sometimes I feel like you guys think I'm boring in the voiceovers. I'm not sure. Some people say it. Um, I love doing voiceovers just because I feel like it's a lot faster for me and it's a lot faster for you guys to learn and for me to really talk in depth what with what I'm doing. I feel like voiceovers make me teach a lot more. So let me know your opinions in the comments below. Let me know what you guys want to see in the next videos coming up. I do have a few coming your way, so stay tuned for that. But let me know what you guys want to see next. Let me know. I know you guys want me to do prom looks, right? I know that prom is like around the corner and you guys want me to do those. So I will definitely do those. But if you guys have any more questions or anything like that, please comment below. If you have enjoyed this video, please thumbs it up for me. And subscribe if you want to see more of this face. Because I know you do, right? Right? Not, right? Huh? One of you? One of you want to see more of this face? Anyway, guys, I love you all so much. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you next time. Mwah. Bye, guys.